but it was really the Kobe Bryant moment was what everybody was expecting to have kind of their heartstrings tugged a little bit. It was emotional. It was it really, was. really emotional. And I remember when Vanessa Bryant gave the speech, um, you know, when, when Kobe passed away and she was so, so like graceful about She's it. Eloquent. She really, really, really is. But when she said, and I cry every single time in her speech, how they love her and, and her daughter. I mean, her and her daughter. It's a Monday. My goodness. Mm -hmm. How Kobe and, and his daughter, they were so tight that God took them both because he knew that they could not live without one oh. another. I mean, the things that she says. It's and devastating. Yes. And it's almost like it hurts even more. Yeah. But then it almost is like, okay, at least they're together. Like, I tried really hard not to cry. Like, but every time she speaks and she has to speak about it, I don't know how she does it. She's a beautiful but woman, first of all. And, incredible. Uh, Kevin Garnett went in, of course. Uh, it was a great class. Kevin Garnett and uh, Tim Duncan, a bunch of others. Mike Breen went in. How about that, man? But Vanessa Bryant stole the show as Michael Jordan welcomed Kobe Bryant to Springfield, Mass. But she had the last word here. Listen to uh, Kobe's Vanessa Bryant. Congratulations, baby. All of your hard work and sacrifices paid off. You once told me, if you're going to bet on someone, bet on yourself. I'm glad you bet on yourself, you overachiever. You did it. You're in the Hall of Fame now. You're a true champ. You're not just an MVP. You're an all-time great. I'm so proud of you. I love you forever and always. Kobe Bean Bryant. Beautiful. I don't MJ, know. Like, I MJ. cry. Yeah, you can't Every help single, it. You can't help it. You can't like, help if you're not it. crying, then, like... And I just want to, I still, I feel like it's still like the hormones in the back of my eyes from having a baby. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, no, but I feel you. This is just like the water faucets just turn on in the back of my eyes. I, and even though I, I like, I know what she was going to say, you watch it again, it still just pulls on your heartstrings. It does. So. You know, and long live Kobe. The Mamba, yeah. the Black Mamba lives forever now in, in Springfield, Mass. And Mac, how do you compare like a Kobe to, wh who would you compare him to in the NHL? That's a tough one, thinking about somebody who's, who's, you know, passed on. Because Kobe, the thing with Kobe Bryant is he transcends basketball into, you know, the world and, you know, the ups and downs. And one thing is that why I believe um, we have the attachments to certain individuals, but their stories. And, and you look at Kobe's story, um, you know, when his wife says you overachiever, her, well, there's nobody that when, you, when it comes down to the end of the day, what do you put in to get out? And Kobe earned everything pretty much that he got but the fierce competitor and stuff and you know what Pilar you you make a great point but at the end of the day as long as in the big picture you look at it you realize that we're spiritual beings having a human experience and the fact that they that it to me it brings I guess that little hug to the end of it that in such a great tra tragedy of losing Kobe that his daughter went with him so that they are together yeah. You know, to believe in that, that and for it doesn't matter what I think, but the fact that I hear it from his family and I hear it from his wife and somebody, and I believe when they say it, and it's just something that highs and lows in life. We've all lost people, and it's just a way to honor different ones. Now, this is a big, big one because he's a national star, but uh, you know, I don't think so much. Maz is, I think there's just people in our lives that. Uh, that we have these relationships with and athletes are one of them because of the story and and his is a story of of falling down you know obviously the colorado stuff but to be able that's life and to be able to work through it and we saw it in front of in front of our eyes and uh just a tragic end to it that it what makes you say is that life's short and enjoy every day tell everybody right. you love them so if, if kobe's an example of that but now He's held in such high esteem, and then everybody will know who Kobe Bryant is forever because of the Basketball Hall of Fame if they didn't already. Terry right. Foster in the let, audience. Yeah, uh, let me say this. Give us yours. The first conversation I had about Kobe Bryant after he died was not about basketball. My daughter, Celine, called 
and she was bawling in tears. And she thought about the, the, the daughter and Kobe dying together. And she, she said, the first thing I thought about was when we used to drive to soccer tournaments. And there was one soccer tournament we drove to in Rockford, Illinois. And there was trucks on both sides. And I, and I told her, I got to be real careful because this is dangerous. And uh, the lane that we went wasn't even a full lane. So she, she thought about that, about the, the travels that we had and, and uh, you know, the, 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 the dad, daughter, and all that kind of stuff, whatever it was. And that's what my first conversation was, was not about him as a basketball player, it was as, as him as a dad and how dads and daughters go through so much emotional things, whether it's in sports or academics and everything and that was our first conversation it was very tearful i was not going to cry about kobe bryant because he's he's an athlete yeah but i ended up because it brought it all home with my relationship with my daughter amen here too i coached my all three of my girls and i tried to bring them up almost like boys you know i did the best i could they're all girls though but uh, i made them play sports not made them i asked them to play sports and they took it into their heart and they loved it which I love. I like when they see dad watching games and they get a kick out of me. And now, what's uh, the name of your team? Uh, the popsicles? The, le the lemon drops. No, the lemon oh, the drops. Lemon drops. Lemon. Okay, Come here we on. go. Come on. <laughs> Hall of Fame <laughs> coach. The lemon drops, baby. Anyway, uh, it's just it's just heartwarming when it's man, it's your daughter. Yeah. Well, I think the it's life of it. I think what Terry just said is that the athlete part of it. And Pilar has not stopped crying I, since I, like, I we can't. played. But it's, I, I, it's exactly I, I, what you, you said. You warm my heart, heart children. Pilar. You warm my heart. You know, the end stuff because it goes back to that. Because honestly, forget about it and forget it's a helicopter. But it, the situations that people travel with their families, with teams all the time. You know, you 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 know you relate it. You remember a couple of years ago the. The bus tragedy in uh, Western Canada oh, from the, the, the junior hockey humble oh. Broncos. Yeah. And so I think it's just the, the reality because you don't realize. And, and Terry just gets me to thinking back to not only driving my kids to all their events, but but playing junior hockey and driving five my parents by five or six hours to come and watch you play in the winter time and all that stuff. That man it makes you sit back and and sort of realize and be grateful and. Mm. Sort of, like you said, that th that's to me when athletics can bring the world together. That's the positive spiritual part that I think is bigger than the sport itself. It is. It is. And it's phenomenal. I, I also, Easy, what were you going to say? Because I'm just trying not to cry. Easy, what do you have to say? <laughs> I was going to say, he's a big part of like why all this and me even being here happened. It's, it's, it's like, you know, that happened. Kobe's obviously a legend in, in NBA, but also we did off the court inspiring people. And it's like, it doesn't matter what you did in life. Nothing's guaranteed. Tomorrow's Absolutely. never guaranteed. And even, you know, taking his daughter, too. So it just put, put life in perspective to me to chase the things that I truly uh, love, you know, like my son and, and, and sports. It's just spending my time in life doing what I enjoy most. And that, that's the, what the Kobe passing did for me. Look what us, right. look, look how it started. He's, he passed in January of 20. And what happens after that? I mean, we all get shut down as a nation, yeah. as a country. It, uh, it, I don't know. It just started a terrible year. Yeah, it, was, it just it was started. Hard. A terrible year, but we have a new year now, and right. we look forward to it, and we look forward to next year.